Welcome to the second video of acid-base balance and today we're going to finish up acid-base physiology. Last video we finished by saying how does the body get rid of hydrogen ions in the kidney and first of all we talked about the process of reabsorption of bicarb right we said most of the bicarb if not all of it gets filtered uh, through the uh, glomerulus and all of it gets reabsorbed in a very efficient way. We said the hydrogen ion here this pump here the red one absorb sodium it's kind of anti-port pump and secrete hydrogen hydrogen bind with bicarb because we said bicarb is not easily directly absorbed to form the ht h2 co3 carbonic acid then with a aluminal carbonic anhydrase this will become h2o and co2 easily absorbed into the cell to form again carbonic acid and another carbonic anhydrase um, will split it into H plus that will be used again here and bicarb that will be reabsorbed. This is the process of absorbing bicarb. And we said this is, does not add any net, net bicarb, a net loss or gain. So technically should not affect the pH. Basically, we're just bringing back the lost bicarb. And this process can be potentiated by different factors. One of them is ACF depletion or volume depletion. Especially here we're talking about vomiting. So that, that means volume depletion can potentiate metabolic alkalosis and it makes it hard to treat metabolic alkalosis if you cannot replace this volume. Second of all, increase partial pressure of CO2. It makes sense. As a compensatory mechanism, it will potentiate this issue. Also, angiotensin itself can potentiate this. And fourth important one is hypokalemia. Hypokalemia, similar to ECF depletion, will potentiate this reabsorption process and makes it hard to treat metabolic alkalosis unless you replete uh, potassium. And almost always, if I can say, metabolic alkalosis associated with hypokalemia. You won't see metabolic alkalosis, pure metabolic alkalosis associated with hyperkalemia. Then we said another way in the proximal tubule to get rid of hydrogen ion is by the process of secreting NH4, right? Without going to the details, this is a very important and essential way to get rid of hydrogen ion in the proximal tubules. And this can be impaired by hyperkalemia. Remember that. That's one of the factors that make hyperkalemia associated with acidosis. And then the other way we said in the distal and convoluted tubule, convoluted tubule we have this pump that secretes actively pump hydrogen ion outside and this can be potentiated by aldosterone. Now the other things to know is any spill, any extra spillage of bicarb. Bicarb is negative, it's an anion, right? When bicarb gets lost in the urine, for any reason because it's an ion it will drag a cation with it so whenever the bicarb gets spilled in the urine it drag what drag sodium with it why i'm saying this that makes sodium unreliable sometimes urine sodium is unreliable sometimes in work up in metabolic alkalosis because that's when we spill bicarb in the urine is when we have metabolic alkalosis and the body try to spill that bicarb or for any reason is spilling bicarb let's say this process of absorption is not efficient there is a problem with it so you spill more bicarb you're not absorbing the whole bicarb so you spill some bicarb that will drag some sodium with it so that's one thing and the problem with the absorbing bicarb if there's any problem here that can lead to proximal tubular acidosis or rta type 2 and whenever sodium get spilled whenever sodium present to the distal convolute and convolute tubules in larger amount it will lead to further loss of potassium so remember that these two things let's stick it in our mind when bicarb gets spilled in the urine drag sodium with it when extra sodium when more sodium or more sodium present to the distal and convolute tubule it potentiate the loss of potassium because it gets reabsorbed and potassium gets secreted so you can simply now you don't have to memorize that here in the RTA type 2, the proximal tubule type, uh, RTA type 2, that will lead to hypokalemia, right? Or associated with hypokalemia. So any problem with the pump here can lead to distal tubule RTA or we call RTA type 1. So basically RTA type 1 is failure to secrete hydrogen ion through this pump in the distal and convoluted tubules. And because of that, you cannot acidify urine and urine pH whether here in RTA type 2 and type 1 urine pH usually more than 5.5 and we'll talk about the uh, 
RTA type 4 while we're here, basically aldosterone is not there. Either it's blocked or it's deficient. That will lead to RTA type 4. And we'll talk about uh, more about that, especially when we talk about hyperkalemia. This will lead to hyperkalemia and will lead to, will lead to urine pH that's less than 5.5 because it does not affect hydrogen. Uh, so aldosterone presence is not essential for the function of this pump. It does potentiate it, but it's not essential. So remember that. So let's finish here. Remember that problem in the process of absorption filtered by carb can lead to RTA type 2 and can lead to loss of bicarb in the urine. The, the bicarb will drag sodium with it and the sodium here in the distribute will lead to loss of more potassium and lead to hypo Kalemia. So presence of more sodium in the distal tubules will lead to loss of more potassium. And remember, hyperkalemia can impair uh, the ammonium formation and loss of hydrogen ion. And remember these factors, volume depletion, hypercarbia, hypokalemia, and angiotensin all can potentiate bicarb absorption process. Remember the last thing we end up with, we end with, uh, with here is because of this factor of the loss of urine, sodium in the urine, in cases of spillage of uh, bicarb in the urine, that makes urine sodium is unlikely to help. And in workup and urine chloride, usually the one we need to look into. And we'll come to that in more details. Next video, we'll start talking more about practical points and clinical points and ABGs. See you then.